shame and self. So we will talk about now how not having access to the dominant language, but also the devaluation of the linguistic capital we have leads to a sense of shame in our own identity. So we talk about work and we talk about how uh, not knowing the official language, which most probably is English, limits one's participation at work. So this student says that even if you know the work, the presentation of that work has to be an, in English. And that is where the problem lies. So you might have all the knowledge, but you might not be able to demonstrate that knowledge, not be able to make the argument, not be able to negotiate uh, compromises because you do not know the language within which the, all of this is being done officially. And then interestingly, this child says, the boss will never take with himself someone who cannot speak. Someone who cannot speak, does this person not know any other language or is it that he, he cannot speak? He is now equating the language that is English language um, with the right to speak and the right to be heard. And I would like to remind you of the similar incident, uh, incidents in the, this private school. If you would remember this boy who wants to say something of essence, a problem to this uh, principal who would not listen to this principal, because, uh, to, to this child because he does not speak in English. And again, at workplace, we can see the same ideology and how much he is worried that he'll never progress in his career because the, the boss will not take somebody who has this um, uh, poor English language proficiency because people might think that his team is not competent enough or not educated enough. Again, talking about Khalid. Now, Khalid is an interesting case. We are talking about this person who is in a white, uh, who is in a blue collar job. Simple person managing a generator at a factory, getting a low salary, not a big deal. But even then, because people code switch so much into English, his boss asks him to hand over a certain tool using an English term and say something, a very short phrase in English, and he cannot understand. He cannot understand, and the people around him laugh at him, and he sort of remembers the embarrassment to that day. And then he talks about something, his social life, and he's sitting with his friends, and he's not, suddenly not feeling well. And he says, uh, in Urdu, he says, Mujhe matli And his friends start laughing. And he says, why are you laughing? And he says, there's no such thing as matli. There is nausea. Or you say, I feel like um, uh, mujhe vomit ho rahi So although these students, this group would not use a whole sentence because of course they do not have access to English language, but even the use of one phrase in Urdu rather than in English makes it, the, makes it or, or legitimizes this uh, making fun of this person. So you can see how the depth of this English hegemonic ideologies are working within the society. Then this teacher talks about a staff room. This girl has worked very hard in her life, moved up to this a small, a low fee private school. And what is her salary? Her salary is only 1500 rupees. And within this staff room also, he, she feels that when two or three teachers are talking to each other in English, then she feels so excluded and doesn't know where to go. And then we are talking about the low self-esteem that she feels. So, and this is, um, uh, this quote, we are like lesser, has been used by several participants who feel they are lesser in position and which is very worrying because now they have all undergone 
uh, secondary education. The point of departure, remember, was secondary education. And if you want this, a very blatant example of how shame in self works, think about this girl again who is now in this, uh, teaching in this class three. This is class three, low fee private school. And you can think about, where, uh, think about the neighborhood where people are only paying 300 to 500 rupees as fee. And she says, it is very embarrassing. One day when I was teaching math to grade three, I said parkar. She asked them to take out their parkar, the Urdu word for compass. and the, uh, and a child said, Miss, this is called a compass. It was such a shame. I did not even know that pahade are multiplication tables. And then they, that is the students, started to ask, Miss, how much have you studied? I told them it was none of their business. But they kept asking, Miss, how much have you studied? It is such a shame. Now this is the point where need to think about what we are doing. This girl who had this um, FA, that is she, was, she had done her intermediate, properly qualified to teach mathematics at least to this class of three, cannot just turn around and tell the children that parkar is an Urdu word, a legitimate Urdu word for compass. What is the big deal? That pahade is what we call tables, multiplication tables in Urdu. And these are, this is the difference between two languages. And my education is this much and it is much more than you would need at this stage. But she, all she does was say again and again is, is what a shame it was, how embarrassing it was. And this is exactly what happens when we devalue the linguistic capital of uh, people.